morning and welcome to Justin Praise TV. My name is Justin Praise and this video is all about critical thinking. Um, I would like to um, tell you more about this because critical thinking is regarded as one of, one of the most difficult courses on campus, that is the perception, but um, I always say that critical thinking is not difficult. It all depends on the effort you put in the course. If you want critical thinking to be difficult for you, then it will be difficult for you. But if you want it to also be easy for you, it will be easy for you. How do you make the course difficult? You make the course difficult by not learning or by not really uh, taking your time to do research on the course. That one it will be difficult. But if you are learning, and I know sometimes you go through the slides and you may not understand certain things, and that is the reason why I have read, I have organized this session so I can walk you through some of the things you don't understand. So I do videos on critical thinking, academic writing, information studies, business administration, sociology, and so on. So this is what a video on critical thinking. So please um, make sure you, you, you click on your subscribe button to give me a follow because you know, it's not easy to record videos like this. It takes us so many times. And even in editing it can ed editing such videos can even take you like four to four four to five hours and even recording the video or preparing before so one video like this can take us about five hours or to five hours to uh, six hours before we can release some some videos take me one full day because you have to do small you have to go and do something small come and continue just like that so please just subscribe and when you subscribe to it means that any video i release on any course you get you'll be the first person to get a notification so you make sure you turn on your notification so if i release a video you'll get a notification so you can watch it so i'll be releasing videos from session one to session 12 okay so i'm going to be here with you um critical thinking is not difficult but if you want it to be difficult for you, that one it to be difficult for you. As I said, my name is John Simpris and my number is 0545-41-2017, 0545-41-2017. So if something baffles your mind and you need further explanations, you can get in touch with me or WhatsApp me. I'll be there to provide that assistance. So now let's now delve into this course that is critical thinking and session one is all about thought as subject of what scrutiny so we are coming to look at the various type of, types of sentences in our conversation or in our daily conversation we encounter with information or we get encounter with what information and and all how um people normally uh, communicate with us so being a critical thinking student gives you the opportunity or gives you the the the, the chance to think outside the box okay so you don't make mistake that your colleagues normally make you don't really ought do what they do so when and and it, it will help you to dominate whichever conversation you are having being it your your business partner your marriage partner your boy whatever whosoever that you you engage in a conversation with physical thinking will help you to what to be able to ask smart people, know uh, the common tricks people normally use in languages and, and how to work, to, 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 to uh, detect lies, okay? So it, it helps you to think faster or it helps you to, work, to, to, to be smart in terms of what uh, 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 thinking and, and, and how certain things, uh, how to work, identify certain things. So critical thinking is very, very important. So, um, now let's look at let's look at the um so this this one we are coming to look at sentences and then the type of sentences the type of the type of sentence shape thought which is interrogative imperative declarative and how we can recognize fragment and emo emotive expressions so this is this is it now let's now dive more into um, a sentence, a sentence. So when you talk of a sentence, sentence is a group of words that has a subject and predicate independent on its own and makes meaning. So 
um, I can say that if features of sentences include what subject, predicate, and what, um, it should also make meaning, right? It should what make meaning, okay? So it should be clear. I if I read it, I, it should be what it should be clear. There should be brevity. There should be clarity, and 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 there should be what, um, um, some form of um um. um importance okay it they are there we there are so many sentences and we we'll, we'll get to know we we'll get to understand them as time goes on so anytime you get in uh, in contact with anyone or maybe you engage in any conversation they are you use what sentences right you you put words together to form sentences if i want to talk if i want to uh, if you are far from me and I want you to get closer to me, I'll construct what, a sentence by saying that, oh, can you come closer or can you bring me this thing? So at the end of the day, I am what trying to communicate to you. So we'll look at this type of what sentences we construct in our daily life and how relevant they are. So, like I said, with a sentence, it 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 should have what a pred a subject. When I talk of a subject, subject is someone the sentence talks about, a person that the sentence talks about. If I say the hunter killed the antelope, the hunter becomes my the hunter becomes what my subject, because it is the one that the sentence is referring to. Or the sentence is talking about you assess the whole sentence the hunter killed what the antelope so it is what someone that the the, the sentence is so the sentence is really talking about a hunter who killed what an antelope so that one becomes what my sentence and then the predicate when you talk of the predicate the pre predicate is the rest of the sentences that talks about the subject so the sentences that explains or talks about the subject becomes what my predicate so now that we uh, we have underlined the the hunter as our subject then the remaining words become a predicate because if i i said what he killed what the antelope so killed what the antelope so kill the antelope is talking about the action that the hunter performed so that one becomes what my predicate and now we know subject and predicate but it should make sense but don't worry about that if you don't understand that don't worry about that as we go far you understand it but make sure you watch this video to an end so you understand it uh, critical thinking is is just like a foundation or it's like building a house you must start from the scratch and you must get everything so if you're having challenges with your studies or something you can equally get in touch with me and I'll see how best I can help you out, okay? So, that is it. And then, so, like I said, the person or a thing that the sentence talks about, and then the predicate is what about the part of sentence that talks about the subject. So, now let's look at the examples that are that have been given here. Joan is a student. If I say Joan is a student, um, Joan becomes my subject. And then say student is what my predicate. But now let's uh, now analyze it. Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. It makes sense, and it is complete because I am referring. I'm talking about someone who is what a student, and it is what complete. John is a student. Yes, that is what. That is the kind of uh, 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 thing she's she's really involved at the moment. She's what a student. So it makes what meaning. If I say mathematics is an interesting subject, it is what a complete sentence. The sentence is complete because um, it has all the features. It has subject, it has predicate, and it is what complete. So here, um, which one is my mathematics? Uh, sorry, which one is my subject and which one is my predicate? Please click on the subscribe button and then tell me what yeah, the subject is and then the predicate is please i am waiting i'll be i'll be looking forward to uh, your answers so the mat mathematics is an interesting subject tell me the one that is my, your sub uh, the subject and the one that is the predicate and tell me if it it makes meaning right and then you are great you are great you are great to uh, tell me 
that one is also a tax for you tell me if it is um if thou tell me the the subject and then the predicate which one is the subject which one also is the predicate and uh, does it make sense yes and let me let me add one more to it johnson praise johnson praise is a tutor okay johnson praise is a tutor so we don't want to tell me underline the subject and predicate and tell me if that one um makes sense if it makes sense so let's continue okay so um let's look at statement when you talk about statement statement is a sentence that says something which is either true or false for example uh socrates socrates is what it's a man socrates is a man let me explain a statement for you. Statements are truth bearers. When you say something is truth bearers, it is sentences that say something which is either true or false. So we call it what? Truth bearers. So sentence uh, statements are what? either true or false. If I say John Mahama is the president of Ghana, it is something we can verify whether he is the president of Ghana or not. Right? Currently, uh, if we go to the records, we realize that he's not the president of Ghana, but he was once what a president of Ghana. So that one becomes what a statement because it is uh, verifiable and you can tell whether it is true or false. So right now, when I say your mama is a president of Ghana, you tell me no, right? It is false, right? So sentence uh, statement are uh, either true or false. So you can think of other uh, uh, statement or other sentences that you think. They are statement. If I say Accra is the capital of Ghana, yes, Accra is the capital of Ghana because um, ge geographically that is what they count uh, the, the, the capital of what Ghana. When you, when you go to our records or when you go to you do your research, it is the capital, the capital city of what Ghana. If I say United uh, um, Barack Obama is was once a US president. It is what a statement because um, I can verify it right and let me now go through the examples um, they've given Socrates Socrates is what Socrates is a man so we can verify whether it's a man or a woman right yes when we meet Socrates we can check there are some features we can check from him whether he is having muscles whether he is having a, a male organ whether it's having so we can find out those features and de determine whether it is true or false okay and then if i say triangle has three sides yes we can check that if i give me a, tri a triangle i can verify whether it, it has three sides or not and then uh but barcelona is the capital uh of spain me i'm a i'm a Barca fan so i don't want to hear anything in madrid so barcelona is the capital of spain if I say Barcelona is a capital of Spain, that one is also what? That one too, we can check. Okay, when you go through the records, you could identify whether Barcelona is a capital of uh, Spain or not. And then if I say UGRC 150 is a compulsory course for all students in University of Ghana, it is also what? We can, we can check. Yes, in UGRC, University of Ghana, there are some courses that we call it required courses. UGRC means University University of Ghana required courses. So anytime you hear anything UGRC, it simply means University of Ghana re required courses. That is UGRC. Those courses are compulsory courses and you can't afford to fail it. If you fail that course, it means you can't what? You can't uh, graduate, right? And if you, you you shouldn't even get E. If you get E two, you have to reset it. So you have to make sure that you pass and pass it well. So you just see that is how the, it is. Um. However, not all sentences are statement, right? Like I told you, not all sentences are statement. If only you can verify whether it is true or false, then it is what it's a statement. But if you if I say how are you? Can I verify, like, is it, it's not, it's not a statement. This one is an interrogative. I'm trying to ask you a question. Run. Run. Yes, it's, it's, it's not a statement. It is what, uh, um, it is, um, how do you call it? Emotive expression. Run. Run. 
if I tell you to run, uh, it could also be what a fragment, right? So, and if I say uh, greatness, uh, um, parambrates, okay, greatness parambrates, it also what it is not. Uh, sorry, greenness parambrate, greenness parambrate. That one too, it is not what statement. Like I told you, statement they are what they are truth bearers. They cannot be verified. They are. They, 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 they are sentences that can be true or false. So, so let's um, no, statement out truth bearers like I already told you. Now let's look at the uh, types of sentence shape thought. So there are various types of sentences which uh, we need to know. So this include interrogative. When you talk of sentence shape thought, um, it it what it refers to different forms of sentences that express different thoughts. Of human beings okay so it expresses what different thoughts of human beings and 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 this the, some of these are, are served to what, ask questions or gain information while others issue a directive or request to get something done some sentences also convey information so these are all the sentence shape thoughts and we'll take our time to go through them one after the other so we can what understand them better so let's look at it, uh, the types of sentence shape thought the type of sentence shape thought are imperative declaratives and then um declarative and yeah so that is what interrogative imper uh, imperative and declarative sentences so these are the sentence shape thought so interrogative assuming a, a policeman or a woman Interrogative is something you, you people always use all the time. We are going to interrogate him. We are going to interrogate him, right? So you're going to what, ask the person further questions to, what, to, to be able to what, get more information or for the person to be able to elucidate uh, further about his or her action. So you do what? You interrogate that through investigation and, and, and that's the CID people always will do that. So please pay attention after this after the end of the discussion i'm going to give you some 20 questions to answer so i'll put it below the uh, i'll put it under the comment section so you check and then answer those questions for me and 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 um if you want to know whether you are you are right or not you can uh, when you get in touch with you or you message me i can show you your your performance so it, at the end of every session i'll make sure I give you some short tests to, to do for me, right? Uh -huh. So that is it. Now we are coming to look at interrogative. Interrogative are the same as what questions, right? They are called right, questions, and and they are what sentences expressed to seek for for information. If I want to know how, your age, I I I what I have to what there's a, a question I have to ask you. I can't tell you that oh come here and you expect me to know your age right if i want to know your age the best question to ask is how old are you so in my quest to get information from you that is what we call what we call it interrogative so have you been thinking of getting information from someone else have you been thinking of getting to know whether the girl is single or or uh, uh, i mean dating have you been thinking of how to know whether um um you 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 are the, you are a good person or a bad person. If you want to know whether you're a good person or a bad person, you have to ask questions. Is that not it? You have to ask people around you, oh, am I a good or bad person? So they will be able to tell you. So in your quest to get information from people, you ask questions and interrogative usually ends with question mark. Pay attention to it. In examination, they are going to give you plenty, most of these uh, questions, okay? Questions that fall under interrogative, questions that fall under uh, imperative, uh, declarative and then they ask you to identify so they'll give you the sentence and then they'll come with it or probably they, they'll ask you to form sentences that fall under what interrogative but it's likely to come in your uh, um your midterm uh, exams which is what the interim assessment the IA is the midterm exams mm -hmm. so it is likely you are going to get these things in your midterm exams rather than the examination so when you are preparing for 
your interim assessment these are the things you should focus on because you can't go away with you can't do away with it um let me give you an example to get information from people you could see that all the questions here um did you take your vitamin your vitamin this morning do you want a coffee tea or soda where do you live now okay to also know whether you are following the class well now try and give me right two sentences that you think they are interrogative under the comment section for me two sentences you think they are interrogative under the comment section for me so who is who is playing in the super bowl okay who is playing in the super bowl there is a game there is a game on today isn't there so you could see that all the sentences are ending with question mark question mark so if a sentence ends, ends with question mark it means the person is trying to what ask a question do you understand it so that's why we call it a question mark so interrogative are not true tooth bearers like i told you it is opposite of what statement interrogative are not tooth bearers so sentences that usually ends with question marks are not the same as what uh, statement right they are not two bearers they are out they are four state sentences so if i say it is four sentences some of them you can't identify them mm -hmm. you can't identify them right and let's look at the imperative when you talk of imperative there are sentences expressed to get someone to perform an action if as we are here if i want you to uh, participate or take part in my uh, uh or uh, to know whether you are taking part in the class what i do is that i'll ask you um can you please uh, drop your answers under the comment section do you understand it so i ask you to drop your comment under this uh, uh, your, your 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 question your answers under the comment section so with this i'm trying to get you to do something for me so have you been thinking of getting someone to do something for you probably being a parent being a boss or being a a, a friend thinking of someone if if you are a friend oh please can you send me a momo can you send me momo can you do this for me can you open the door can you do this do you get it and an interrogative they come in three sorry imperative they come in three ways they come in command form they come in directives and they come in request so we we'll take our time to go through all these things some of the requests are some of the uh, 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 the, the, the 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 things we normally demand from people or if you want someone to do something for us most of them are in some of them are in command I'll tell you, hey, shut the door. Hey, come here. Come here. If I tell you, come here, I'm commanding you. Do you get it? Shut the door. I'm commanding you. Do you understand it? If I tell you, don't do this. Leave it. I am giving you a command. You can think of those uh, uh, bossy, uh, your bosses, how they normally talk. Don't come to le work late again. He is giving you a commandment. He is giving you a command. This is your last time. Never do this again. The person is what? Commanding. And I always, when I get to this side, I always tell people that eh, if you're a boss today, that doesn't mean that you owe the world. Eh? Make sure you respect people. If you're a manager or whatever, respect people. Some people talk to people commanding because of the little position they have. If you're a boss, please. You can sometimes come down to the level of your workers. Do you get it? Be at their level sometimes. There are sometimes if it, it, it requires you to command them, you have to command back. Not all the time. Oh, can you please write this report for me? If you say please to your, your worker, you won't die. Instead of using command all the time, you can use a request. So now we know command, right? It's a way to get someone to do something for us by using command. Do you understand? You get it. And then now let's look at request. So instead of using command as a ball, sometimes you can use a request. Oh, can you please close the door? Please don't come to work this time again. Do you get it? Please don't come to work this time again. Okay. It's what? I don't want you to come 
to work that time, but I didn't command you. I gave you a request. It was what a request that I'm giving to you. So sometimes you have to, before you, you, you try commanding someone, you must first use request. And if the request doesn't work, that's where you use what command. If you, if you have a child and always, if you're shouting on the child, to get to a point that the child will not be afraid of you again. So sometimes, oh, my daughter, oh, my son, please don't do this, okay? You, do, you don't want the child to do this or you don't want the child to do whatever he or she is doing. But the way you are talking to the child, it will make the child feel love. We are human beings who all deserve some love. So sometimes, please, learn how you talk to people. Even if the person, you are older than the person, learn to respect. Learn to respect each and every one. Do you understand it? So can you please close the door? Oh, my beautiful daughter. Can you even after say before say even when you say my beautiful daughter, it is a request. It is a it you are you want the child to do something for, for you. Oh my beautiful daughter, can you go and buy me this? Because of the beautiful and please that you use in the child will go. I say, hey, Kwame, come go and buy me this thing. The way some parents talk to their children is very, very bad. All the time giving command. Yes, you give birth to the child, but sometimes respect the child too. Do you understand it? So, um, can you please help me cross the street? It is what um, a request. And can you please... So, you see, they, they come with what? A question mark. So, sometimes pay attention to some of the imperative, but... Uh, uh, some of the imperative, not all question, uh, um, not all um, um, sentences that uh, that ends with what question mark are um, uh, interrogative. Some are imperative, but first of first of all, you must know. Uh, uh, the first thing you need to know is that is the statement trying to get someone to do something. If it is trying to get someone to do something, then it is what imperative and i know um sometimes they will not give you command or request or the command request and then the um the command the request and then how do you call it the um so we have command we have request and then there are three there are three that i made mention of and then directive ricky and then the directive, all of them fall under imperative. So if you don't see uh, anything command directive or, or a request, you sh and you have imp uh, imperative there, you have to choose what imperative. So that is it. So like I said, not all questions, not all um, sentences that ends with question mark are interrogative. Some are imperative and uh, what? request okay can you please do this can you then if he's getting you to do something but if he's trying to get information from you then it is a, a, a interrogative so i hope you know the differences right so so however when imperatives are made in a polite manner it tends to have explicit and implicit meaning at the same time implicit uh, imperative are also not true to be right. so imperative and interrogative, they are not truth bearers. They are not statement. You understand it? They are not statement. When you talk of implicit and explicit meaning, uh, when you talk of explicit meaning, where's that have what explicit meaning? You know, let me tell you, let me explain some of these things to you so you understand them better. When you say something has an implicit implicit meaning or something has what an explicit meaning this is how it is okay so like i said if we say words have implicit meanings they means that they have what hidden meanings hidden meanings and there are some words that have what two meanings okay or more than two meanings and that is what we call what? the implicit meanings. So when it's um, let me give you an example. Please, please close the window. Uh, sorry, this is um, this is for uh, example for uh, explicit. Let me give you an example of what implicit, implicit. So if if I say 
we we all understood that we um, we all un understood that there will be exams tomorrow because the lecturer said we should come prepared. It is what it it has an implicit meaning. Why am I saying so? It has an um it, ha it has an implicit meaning because the word you know it is not really clear. It is not really clear. It, it, it means so many things. We all understood that. Listen to the example I stated. Though. I said that we all understood that there will be exams tomorrow because the lecturer said we should come prepared. As the lecturer said they should come prepared, what what actually do the lecturer want them to do? It could be that maybe they should come with their books and everything. It could be that the lecturer wants to give them uh, 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 um, some surprise. Do, do you get it? Or the lecturer wants to want them to like embark on something else which is what not exams so if i say come prepared if i say come prepared it, it means so many things if you are if if i'm trying to meet you and i say come prepared what am i trying to say it, it means so many things you know if you're a guy you have so many uh, 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 i mean thing to things to think about especially if you're a woman you have so many things to think about am i saying you should come with your book prepare in, in what we, which you do understand it. So these words are what they are implicit. I know, I know some of you are laughing, but it, it is what is implicit. There are so many ways about implicit things, implicit words, especially if a guy likes you or a, a woman likes you, there are some of the things eh, you notice it from how they see, they see things. Someone will be like, oh, I like your dress. Eh? I like your dress. Is it has implicit meaning? I like your dress. Is it, it could be because a person just admire the way you have dressed. The person admires your beauty, or maybe the person has interest in you. So if I say I like your dress, it has a, it has an implicit meaning. It means so many things, and this is also to say that they are uh, in this contemporary uh, era. Uh, 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 there are so many things that people will not tell you, but you get to know it through their actions. This um, um, nonverbal communication dominates, I can say it, it dominates 70 to 80 percent of our com com uh, conversation. Nonverbal communication, how somebody will, 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 will react towards you, how somebody will accept you, how somebody will, will, will behave towards you. The person's posture will even tell you that this person is what this person is with me this person doesn't like me there are some people one day the first day that you meet them now you realize they don't really like you do you understand it the way they do their things will show they are always angry at you they like where you are even they don't want to pass it there are some people if they also like you you understand it you have to know it and that is the same way to if as you are in university we we don't just come here to learn but what we we try to what um learn so many things in the same way, if you are also in maybe a relationship or whatever, sometimes the person will not tell you that he or she is no more interested in you. But you notice that one from the person's actions. So look at look out for people's implicit actions more than the explicit, the direct one. You don't have to wait for someone to come and tell you that I don't want to be your friend before you notice the person doesn't want to be your friend. You will notice it from the way the person behaves towards you. A person will be ghosting you, will not even mind you. Not, and you know, there are some people that are very busy. Somebody like me, if we say I'm ghosting you, so you think maybe I am not minding you, so I don't want to be your friend. And that may not be the case because me, I'm, I'm doing so many things. Do you understand it? But so it's all about you understanding the person. But if it was somebody that maybe was there and, and, and to get to a point, the person is, the person's action have changed. It could be that maybe you have done something wrong, or maybe the person ha a person's perception about you has really changed. The person has changed in his mind or has moved on. Somebody will just live in your live your life without even telling you. Do you understand it? So, be looking out for people explicit, uh, sorry, uh, implicit actions, and these are the actions. It could be nonverbal. Somebody will tell you things that are indirect and so many things. And 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 there are some so some of the things if I say, uh, if I say, uh, I know John Dumelo likes me because he said, uh, and my, my he says he like he likes my dress. That one too is also what is implicit. 
so after this one uh, make sure you drop a word that you think it is implicit under the comment section for me drop any word that you think so we are just learning and we are trying to get things done really if you think some words are implicit drop it under the comment section for me so and they are also implicit words implicit are direct ones okay if i say come i want you to come you you don't have to think about so many things and eh? come yes i want you to come and uh, and and there are some words that if i see i can say oh go do you, some of these words are what they have what implicit they have explicit meaning as example is please close the window uh, you are not to you are not permitted to consume alcohol while driving driving okay this is not a suggestion it is it is an express law do you get it so if someone tell you you are not allowed to drink an alcohol while driving it is so it has what an explicit meaning because it has what a direct meaning it is something that is already in the law and you don't expect someone to tell you that oh maybe it's lying it is the truth he's telling you don't dry i don't do what drink whilst driving it is a very bad habit if you also like doing that stop okay and someone also say that if you also say that uh okay so these are some so if you think some words are also explicit drop them in the comment section we are learning so try to participate in everything we do here right try to participate for me to see your understanding so drop a comment under this the, the drop it under the comment section now we know what our implicit and our explicit meanings are let's now look at let's now look at um the the last one which is what the last aspect which is um under the imperative the implicit and explicit are not under uh, imperative, but they came across, so I have to not take my time to explain it. So the last one under the, imper the imperative is what? Directive. So if I, directive, directive is where I try to what? give you some direction. If you want to come to my home or my place, I can tell you that, oh, pick car from Kaneshi to Legon. When you get to Legon, pick car to maybe East Legon or pick car to Medina. I've given you a, a direction to my place. So in, in our daily lives, and it, you know, I am trying to get you to do something, but I didn't really command you that, oh, come. I didn't also tell you that, oh, uh, um, I didn't also use what request, but I say, oh, please come. But I say that, pick car from what, this side to this side. When you get here, ask of this place. It's what a directive I'm giving to you. It is what's all part of what imperative. And another example is, take two tablets every day, every evening. So when you go to hospital and doctor give you a prescription, it is something what, that it is what a directive, and it is also in a form of what imperative. So, and also take a left and then turn right. It's also what, a directive. So now you know the various types of imperative, command, request, and directive. So now drop a, uh, one example each on the for each of the following directive request and command so you drop a comment and then i'll go through I'll, or if you reply out if you comment i'll reply do you get it i have i'll have all your data so i'll be replying you and if you also want you can maybe whatever i'm asking you can also send it to me if you want to send it to me privately or whatever you can you can pick my number that is 0545 and i'll get in touch with you on that so what is a declarative sentence now we're coming to look at declarative sentence declarative sentences are more or less like statement you know statement already i told you they are truth bearers which means they are either true or false so declarative are also the same as what um as statement so i won't spend my time here so they convey information of different kinds and they are called declarative sentences they can be true or false so we call it truth bearers and they are also called statement or prepositions so in exam they can ask you declarative uh, so declarative sentences are also called what so uh, uh, i think last year there was some question like that so if you get something like statement or prepositions it is the same preposition pay attention preposition and an like, example are so many all these sentences here they are statement so example there are five 
million people at risk. There are five million. It's something we can verify. If they are at risk, you know. If they are not at risk, you know. London is the capital of England. Yes, it is true. So that's why you see it's true or false, Bera. But the first sentence, which I said, there are five million people at risk. Uh, that one too, we can, we can, we can, we can just go and confirm it. This one I can't really tell it directly, but I can go and confirm it. Do you understand? But the second one, which I said, can, London is the capital of England. This one I can confirm it directly for you. And if I see, uh, she should, she she asks whether I like her dress, her dress too. She like whether I have a dress. So this one I'm giving you to, to you, as a. Okay, this one is also what, this one is a. Um, a statement or a declarative, and then it's a nice day for for a walk along the beach. So I can do whether you went you you walk around along the beach or not, and I think you should wear the blue shirt with the khaki pants. So that one too is what a declarative or a statement, and then we are going to the movies later this evening. That one is so declarative or statement. Now let's look at the the various types of declarative so we have factual statement definition and value judgment now like i just like the imperative that also has three types this one too we have for three types too. um we have factual statement when you talk of factual statement factual statement always describe uh, there are sentences that describe the way the world is okay they describe how the world is so they always talk about things that normally happen within the, the world it could be about the temperature could be about the uh, either the weather system how the sun is shining how it is raining and 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 so on and so forth how someone is even maybe uh, 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 like driving or something so that is how the factual statements are and they are factual because we said if if you say something is a factual statement they are out they are verifiable. You can check it whether they are true or false. That's why we say uh, um, that is the creative file. They are all what they are truth bearers, which means that you can verify them. So example one, the current temperature is above zero Fahrenheit. So it is something what it is factual statement. We can check it, right? If you don't get factual statement and you get declarative, choose declarative. They are all the same. And they can use declarative to represent the factual statement. So all these things, it's likely you get, if you don't get a uh, um, factual statement and you get declarative, they are the same because declarative is under, a uh, factual is under a declarative sentence. My car's battery must be dead since the car will not start. And then the light, the light, the lights and horn do not work either. So this one too is talking about a car, and you see factual statement talks about how the world, the way the world is, right? Describe the way the world is. So talking about the car, yes, it is what a factual statement. It is a factual statement, and it's raining outside. Yes, it's also a factual statement talking about how it is raining. So they are found to be true or false by the use of our senses. So. Factual statement, you only get to know whether they are true or false by the use of what? Your senses. You can determine whether Accra is the capital of London or not. By your senses, you can identify whether it is raining or outside or not. That is all about factual statement. Let's look at definitions. Definitions are sentences that convey correct meaning of words. Definitions, I won't explain it much because we'll do definition uh, in session 3 or 2. We that one will delve into the various types of definition to this one i'm just giving you some clue so if a sentence is trying to explain a concept or explain something describe something then we call it what definition example every number is any number that is divisible by two without a remainder it is what a factual statement uh, sorry a declarative and declarative for uh, it, uh, it um the, uh, and our definition do you get it? So it is definition. And definition fall under declarative. So it is trying to de uh, describe how uh, the concept EV number, right? So if you pick two numbers, if you pick any number and you divide it into two and you don't get any remainder, then that is called EV number. And it is true. It's something that is true. So EV numbers are two. EV numbers are four. 
there are eight if you pick five and divide it into the two you have 2.5 2.5 which is what can never be what uh even number and then also we say the bank is a place where monies are kept or borrowed yes we know we have so many types of bank that is a river bank but what you are talking about is a bank where monies are kept or borrowed so i'm trying to explain for you not to think that the bank the one uh the riverside bank is what i'm talking about so i've explained it for you to understand so it is what a definition so if the meaning of the word is correct then it is true but if the meaning of the word is incorrect then it is false so you can know whether it is true or false so if the meaning is true you what and uh, is correct then it is true but if it is not correct it is incorrect then it is false that doesn't mean it is still not what a definition it is what a definition if only is trying to explain a concept is definition but it can be identified whether it is true or false remember i told you they are what uh, declarative sentences are true or false so definition can be true or false if i say a man a, a, a widower is a woman whose husband is dead it is false because a widower can never be a woman it is a man so i have to say a man whose wife is what dead uh -huh. and now the last one under the declarative sentence is value judgment value judgment are sentences that describe or evaluate the way something should be should be or how someone in the world ought to behave so value judgment when you talk of value judgment value judgment are always about it's always telling people how they should behave how should they should talk how they should do certain things how they should um, actually act in certain situation when it comes to a society it is what very common oh this boy there i think the guy is good you shouldn't have leave the guy do you understand it oh i think you shouldn't do this it is not appropriate to leave your wife it is not appropriate to beat you uh, 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 to to what to insult your husband all these things are value judgment. It is passing judgment on somebody. So if the word is passing judgment on somebody, then it is what we call it, value judgment. It could pass judgment on human beings, animals, or things. If it is passing it on a uh, 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 living things, which is human beings and animals, we can see that we, it is what value judgment. If it is passing the judgment on on things like uh, a knife, cutlass. A trees and the, those things then we call it what uh, um, non moral value judgment but if it is about human beings our behavior and how things are being done we call it moral value judgment so now let's look at this thing so if I see he should you should not leave the car doors uh, open you should not leave the car so I'm telling you that you shouldn't leave the car door open it is what I'm, I'm I'm passing a judgment on the things you did, and it is what a value judgment. So if I'm trying to try to pass in trying to pass judgment on certain things, it is what a value judgment. And this is what non moral value judgment because it's not talking about human behavior or maybe animal behavior. It's talking about the the cutlass. Okay, for you, sorry, a door that you shouldn't leave open. It is not appropriate to insult your wife. It is what moral value judgment because he's talking about how uh, uh, as a husband things you shouldn't do to your wife okay and if i say abortion is committing murder and should not be legalized it is passing judgment on any woman who tries to uh, abort his or her baby that it is not appropriate it is what committing murder so if you commit abortion this is same as killing human being and it is true because if you have the gas to kill a, a young baby, unborn baby who is innocent, then you are more than a murderer. And it is true. We still do it in our society and we see nothing wrong with it. It is what? No good to do that. Do you understand it? So if you think you don't, can't keep a pregnancy, then abstain or protect yourself. That is it. But don't go and kill an unborn baby. You don't know what a child who's. Do you understand it? So if you know you have uh things are then stop this unprotected sex right and make sure you protect yourself so to avoid killing babies which is what very bad and and that is it so uh, know that uh, value judgment do not 
state facts or realities but rather interpret facts or realities or express opinion so it is where they are you try to interpret or express opinion on certain things and we call it what value judgment so value judgment comes in two forms that is as i said value moral and then non-moral so moral val value judgment as i said it is not appropriate to insult your wife or under moral abortion is committing murder and should not be legalized it's moral and if i say that uh, another form of non-moral value judgment is uh, um, let's look at non-moral value judgment the knife that i used to cut the meat has really a good edge so this one is a telling you passing judgment on how good a knife is so what makes it what non-moral value judgment is that it say that the knife has what a good edge the good edge makes it what non-moral value judgment and then if i say he should not slam the door so you shouldn't slam it you shouldn't slam the door should not slam the door makes it what non-moral value judgment so Anything you get under definition, anything you get under value judgment or factual statement is declarative sentence. So you don't need to uh, uh, be worrying yourself without seeing this def their definition, moral value judgment or uh, factual statement. Right? If you get declarative, you should choose declarative. I hope you understand it. Now let's look at metaphor. When you talk of metaphor, metaphor is another way of expressing value judgment. How do we how do I explain this? To express moral value judgment, if you want to uh, judge someone, you can use metaphor. If I say Kwame is a lion of University of Ghana, I am passing judgment on you being a lion. It could be that I'm insulting you for uh, 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 being too bossy, okay? Or I'm, I'm, I'm passing a judgment on you being the, the most strongest person or the most fearless person in the university so it's what it's a way of expressing value judgment do you understand it yes if i say uh ajua is the dog of ug it means that you are what the 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 the, the most i can say uh, do i use is a, a a prostitute or a harlot whatever but if i say that you are a dog it could be that you 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 you, you are a talkative or you what you don't close your zip do you understand it yeah you don't close your zip so you dogs dogs you see they even have open sex they are, and they don't care whether people are there they can do and it even lock somewhere and they'll be shouting here and there you understand it so dogs that's their attitude for for them so if someone is comparing you to a dog it could be because of what they are their way their nature how uh, 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 I mean I can say immoral they are, or probably how any you know, dogs can't keep secret. Dogs they back a lot. If they see something small now, back even if a small child is passing that, even even if it's a small dog that is passing, they will be backing. Well, you see these old old dogs will be backing at a young dog, eh? So you don't have to be a dog. You have to you have to be like a cat. A cat will see you coming. Even I'm rob I'm robber. You can even come to the house, try to see things, and then it will be winking at you. Or here one will boo and itchy to understand it. It doesn't care about anything. And if I say you are a tortoise, it means that I'm comparing, I'm judging you for being slow. And it could also be that I'm judging you for being patient. Because tortoise, they are also patient and they are also wise. So it could be that I'm judging you for your movement, your wisdom, or whatever. So it's a way of what? Expressing your what? value judgment. Judging you on something. If I say something, something is a lie, it could be that something is courageous or brave. Mothers are jewels. It could be, yeah, I'm trying to tell you, jewels are the, very, the most precious, precious things in the world. If I say you are a jewel, it means that you are what? You are good to me. If I say, um, um, Jennifer is the apple of my eye. I'm trying to say that Jennifer is a person I really love, I really cherish. Do you get it? So I'm comparing Gen Jennifer to what? An apple. Or if I say um, Muhammad Ali, uh, Bokum Banku is Muhammad Ali. How can you see he's Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali is known for what? Um, uh, I mean, known for his boxing uh, achievement or his boxing records. So it's, it's telling you that he's a good boxer. Or if I say you are Usain Boot, University of Ghana, 
means you are the fastest runner. So it's a value judgment. Pay attention. These things are come in your interim assessment, and they will try to test your knowledge on these things. So be be be, be know how they are and how to identify them. So now drop one val uh, drop uh, uh, um, your comment. Drop well, form one sentence each on the each of the uh, the declarative sentences. That is value judgment. So you 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 type value judgment. You give me an example under. Uh, and that, uh, 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 how do you call it, factual statement, example and uh, uh, definition and example of, of, on that is value judgment. But with the value judgment, give me one example each, which is what? Going to be, um, that is moral and then no moral. And then one example of, um, that is, uh, uh, how do you call it, metaphors, right? So now that we know metaphors, Let's now look at. Let's now look at the sentence fragments. Okay. Sentence fragment. So, what is sentence fragment? I told you earlier that when we're doing the the, the types of the various types of definition, I told you that sentences have. Um, there are some sentences. Quali uh, the features of sentences are what they are. They should what they should have subject. They should have predicated, they should make meaning. There are some sentences that do not make meaning. No sentences are what we call what? A fragment. So if a sentence, you someone forms an incomplete sentence, it is what we call what? Sentence fragment. So sentence fragments do not express complete thought because they do not have either subject, a verb, or a predicate. And they are incomplete. So there are some sentences that do not have what? Uh, subject or even predicate okay so it could be that one of them is missing in the sentence or possibly uh, the, it doesn't have any specific verb do you understand it so it becomes what incomplete so let's now look at this the car was in the shop if i say the car was in the shop it is not complete what was the car doing or what did he do okay well the car was in the shop doing what Okay, I sent the car to the shop for repairs or for maintenance. It is complete sentence. But you say the car was in the shop. What happened there? Eh? It was in the, the shop. So what happened? Do you understand the fragment now? If I say uh, Univ University of Ghana. University of Ghana is. It is incomplete. It's what? It's what? Is it great? Is it good? Is it bad? How do you intend to go about that? If I say after the rain stops, if I say after the rain stops, what happened? So after the rain stop, stop stops, what should I do? Do you get it? What then? What should I do? So you didn't finish the sentence and it is what? A fragment. So this one, after the rain stops. So this one has what? A, a, a subject, but it's not having it, but the... The predicate is, is, is not complete. It's not it's missing predicate. It's not complete. If you want to go, if you want to go with me, if I say if you want to go with me, it has subject, but the predicate is it doesn't have predicate. What should I do? If you want to go with me, maybe you have to pay your lorry fare, or you have to, if you want to go with me, you must you must dress nice. If you want to go with me, what am I trying to are you trying to tell me? If you, I want to go with you, what should I do? Do you get it? Then if I say when you final when you finally when you finally take the test, what will happen? Hmm? If you take the test, what will happen? Will you die? Will you live? Will you pass? Will you fail? What will happen? So this is what sentence fragment. So I know you understand. So if you understand, then give me one example and let me see if you understand it. The fragment. Then uh, since fragments are incomplete sentences. They do not regard as what truth bearers. They are not complete, so they cannot be what truth bearers. So sentence fragment, sentence fragment, um, in, uh, interrogatives, and imperatives are not what they are not truth bearers. Okay, they are not truth bearers. But statement, and then. Declarative sentences are truth bearers because they can be true or false. Now, 
the last aspect of of what we are supposed to do is emotive expression. We express our emotions each and every day, especially when the issue has to do with our personal life, about somebody or about our political parties. We attach much emotions to it. Hey, don't say this thing about my party. Oh, oh, like, do you understand it? Hey, I love this party. I love NDC. I love MPP. MPP is so interesting. NDC is so good. Do you get it? I'm expressing my emotion about that party. So it becomes what? Emotive, emotive expression. Emotive expressions uh, are sentences that express strong feelings sometimes by the use of what? Exclamation mark. So like I told you earlier that the interrogatives usually, not all the interrogatives, sometimes the uh, imperative also ends with what? Question mark. And then, but mostly the interrogative will always end with what? Uh, question mark. The same as what? It's, it's, uh, the emotive expression. I'm not saying the are ends with question mark, but the emotive expression, they ends with what? Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark is what? It is telling you about someone's emotion. Wow! I love fair girls. Wow! I love fat boy. Uh, guys, do you get it? Or if I say I love fat guys, do you understand? It is emotive for expression. I'm expressing my emotion about things I love. Oh, I love Barcelona. I hate Real Madrid. Real Madrid. It is what me and my Barca fans. I'll never love Madrid. I'll never love Chelsea. I'll never li- love Manchester United. Whether you like it or not, there are teams I hate. Do you understand it? I hate. Chelsea. I hate United. I'm expressing my emotion, and wherever I find myself, I'll always go against it. There have been so many shows that I've been to, TV, radio shows, which I've gone to defend my club. There are so many fans that will come after me now. Oh, this is my master. I'll defend my club no matter what, regardless of it. So that is it. I love it. It's something I love. It's my emotions. You get it. If someone also the same way, if if someone is also in love, the person loves, and the, and the person can go to that extra mile to do anything for you. If your person is your partner is not really going to that extra mile to do things for you, then it could be that the love is not loving. <laughs> do you understand it? It could be that maybe you all of you are all play uh playing like you are being careful because anyone that loves you go to that extra mile to do things, and that doesn't mean that. And, and also that doesn't mean if you love a guy, the guy should also use all his investment to invest in you, to all to in, to be spending that money on unnecessary things. If maybe whilst the guy is trying to maybe do something prudent, you know, so there are priorities. If I love you, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't have future. I should have a future. My life should continue. Do you understand it? The same way too if you're a woman. But there are certain things, some basic things that at least if someone loves you, you expect the person to do for you. You get it's not the big 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 things i may be stressing someone you know these days relationship have become symbiotic if i say some relationship has become symbiotic uh, uh, let me explain it um in the olden days our father's relationship were what was uh, parasitic when i say something is parasitic it is um uh, just like uh, if i say parasite in science we learn something about parasite pest and parasite if someone is a is pesting you, you understand it. The person is feeding your blood. If someone is a parasite, parasite they de- derive their their food from other organisms, living organisms. For example, is this uh, uh, cheche fly? You'll be there, and they will come and they will be deriving. Blood, uh, and mosquitoes are also what parasite. Uh, sorry, they are they are uh, yes, they are parasite. So any animal or anyone that derives his energy from you. It's what it's, it's a parasite. So those relationships were parasite, whereby our mothers solely depend on our fathers for money, for everything. But these days, relationship has become a 50-50. Now they say gender equality. So if you say gender equality, then I do 50, you also do 50 yourself. If I'm paying the light bills, you also will pay water bills. If I am building the house, you take care of the house. So, so they get it. And now the guys that normally go into relationship, they take care of this. And so this also goes to you if a lady to be thinking of what adding value to yourself if a guy to don't sit down if not they will leave you every day add value to yourself so that if you come together you can do something on your own that doesn't mean that the moment maybe i come 
I come, maybe you be in a relationship with someone. If the person is not working, it's fine. Maybe the person, but you know that it's not going to be the the end of it. Always be interested in what doing something to support yourself without someone, and that will even give you some kind of respect. Do you understand it? Uh huh. So these days, in our contemporary era, or in this contemporary discourse, relationship has shifted from parasitic relationship to symbiotic. Now, if a guy is coming to your life, he's looking at what you can add to his life. If a woman is coming to your life, he's, the way they do women, they always do that. So the guys are also wise enough. So this is what, if you're also a guy and you're going for a woman, to, you are also consider this some of this. I'm not spoiling you. Let me leave you this issue here so um, I, I don't spoil some of you, your business and stuff. <laughs> you understand it. But it is a nice thing. In university, you learn so many things. And these are some of the things I need to let you know. So emotive expression. Example, if I say... Uh, if I say, what, what exceptional children are, what exceptional children these are, what exceptional children these are, you know, I'm expressing, I, it means I am ast- astonished, I am amazed by what, their action, fantastic, we close the deal, fantastic, you see, it shows elation, it shows happiness, it shows some kind of joy, so, um, emotive expression is not always about love, but it's sometimes about how you express what your anger, how you express your happiness, your confusion, your elation, or your love for something else. So that is it. And if I say, I simply adore you, it shows what some love. So this is what, um, some and my life will never be the same without you. It shows what some form of sorrow. My life will never be the same without you. The person is could be that person as a uh, uh, at the bridge or the person is getting broken heart or whatever. So if a person sued this uh, or maybe about to lose someone, it is showing sorrow and it is emotional, emotive expression. Our team won the champion the championship. It is what happiness. Oh, I didn't see you were in. It is what surprise. Wow, brilliant, awesome. Ouch, bravo. These things are what. Emotive expression. So emotive expression are subject and have no basis for rational evolution. They are also not truth bearers. So emotive expression, they are not truth bearers. Emotive expressions, uh, interrogative, um, which is what um, value judgment. Uh, um, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. The value judgment is 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 what a truth bearer, but the imperatives, yes. The imperatives they are all not um truth bearers and even apart from the imperative to there's also this one which we also learn metaphors metaphors are also not truth bearers so this brings us um to the end please make sure you like and share it on your platforms and share it with your friends and and subscribe to my youtube channel so i cannot bring you more videos let me take this opportunity to also and explain some or tell you something about what those of you who are into business this information is for you if you are if you are having a business you have a company which maybe you are finding it difficult to maybe achieve your sales target or finding it difficult to promote your brand or you sell product and you want to boost your business you know currently we have 5.3 million internet users next 5.3 internet users Everybody is migrating into the digital era. Every business is, businesses are migrating into the digital era. So if you have a business or a company and you are only doing your things locally, you know, you are missing a lot. You have to what, digitalize it. And I have a, an agency that are into what, promotion. We promote businesses. We promote brands. Do you understand it? So if you have a company, we call, we call it Top Strat Digital. That is Top Strategy Digital. So we promote com- businesses, we run social media ads, we do, we design uh, flyers, logos, business letter, uh, how do you call it, a uh, compliment, a uh, card, anything about business, brand, prom- and brand promotion, marketing, we do all these things. We run se- SEO, that is search engine optimization, app store op- optimization, email marketing, uh, 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 f- um, YouTube marketing, Facebook uh, Instagram marketing, 
TikTok and even we do influencer marketing where we use influencers to advertise your product. So we use diff different and we use so many technology to advertise um, to to what to analyze the the data before what we get customers. Assuming you have a business, and and uh, assuming you want to say something about critical thinking. When you go to online, when you search, I think the first or two information that appear, that's what you choose. That is the same thing. Some of your businesses are online, but because you don't really, um, you don't really promote it. Once people go and maybe it's, it's about clothes, then they search you the best clothes in Accra, and they search because people are doing promotion. Those that promote it, their own will come at the top. So you see always sponsored either on the left or the right uh, uh, side, that is on the top, on top, you see that sponsored. Anything that you see sponsored or AD, that means that the person is advertising it. Do you get it? So they will always appear on top of what every search you do. And and it is noted that 97% uh, of people that search things online don't go beyond the second page. So they go to the first page and they don't get whatever they want to get. They go to second page. They'll probably get it. So if you are promoting it, it's better to go, get, go get in front so people can see it. So we make sure that your brand becomes visible. We make sure that people get to know your business so they can advertise, they can buy or transact businesses with you. So we use these technologies to promote your businesses. Contact us on social media. That is what top strat digital on email at them at what w uh, sorry e uh, top strat digital um at gmail.com or you can contact our official whatsapp or you can whatsapp us on what zero five zero three nine zero nine zero nine zero so when you contact these numbers we will get in touch with you our team will get in touch with you and we we'll look at how we can promote your business we do branding branding you know we brand businesses even if you have a business and you want us to rename it for you we can rename it we can get you nice nice flyers some of the reason why you are not selling is because your branding is very very poor your company your branding system is very bad you will get it we have what the, the the technicians and we have the expert to do all these things thank you and please Share the video. May God bless you. Thank you for once again. I am John Simpreis. And if you need any assistance on critical thinking, please get in touch with me. If you want me to take you on one-on-one -on -one classes, please get in touch with me personally. My number is 0540-0543. Uh, sorry, 0545-0545-412017. That's 0545-412017. Thank you for your time. God bless you.